Every year, Ms. Iskra attends the Austin Film Festival with 20 students. They uh, call it the uh, Young Filmmakers Outreach Program. It's a scholarship program where they provide passes for students to attend the festival for free. The first year I was allowed to take 10 students to the festival and the year after that they invited me to bring 20 students and they're all on scholarships based on the money that they collect from um, patrons and um, different people who participate in the festival. The Austin Film Festival is a great opportunity to meet and learn from many accomplished writers and directors. We met Danny Boyle and uh, watched Slumdog Millionaire a couple of years ago. Got to meet uh, Shane Black and um, James Hart. We met Lawrence Kasdan who wrote uh, Indiana Jones movies and um, s some of the Star Wars movies. We met uh, Steve Zion who wrote Schindler's List. Um, we met Ron Howard who wrote and directed a bunch of different things. See, we met the woman who wrote Mulan. I met and actually made friends with Susan O'Connor who wrote Bioshock, the video game. James Cromwell, um, who's an actor who was in uh, The Green Mile and um, Babe and a number of different films. Any student is welcome to apply for a spot to attend the festival. The criteria for qualifying to go to the festival with me is that a student has to write an essay describing why I should take him or her to the festival. And the better the essay, of course, the more likely the chances the student has of, of being able to go. Those students who are selected to attend the festival are given an opportunity to learn from the best in the business. But it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity. I mean, most of the students who go are inspired in some way, even if it's simply to make an effort in a direction that they're interested in. But many of the students I take get interested in film and especially interested in writing because that's the main thrust of the festival is, is writing. And the panels um, are extremely beneficial to my student writers and they've also helped me as a writer. The Young Filmmakers Program continues to encourage students to pursue filmmaking as a career. I definitely plan on attending the festival in future years. With CPHS TV, I'm Andrew Butler. Now, anything's possible. And is there expense involved? Yes, and that price is coming down, but you can let your imagination run free. In order to get people involved in it, good people, you need to offer them something they're not able to get someplace else, rather or, or a lot of money. You know? If you come to Hollywood to make it as a learner, you have three scripts at least, and the best work that you've ever done is the one that you use as your calling card. And if they like that, you thrust the others at them, but you have material you, you've demonstrated in some middling way that this is what you intend to do with your life. The director is the head of the movie. Right? It, um, film is a director's meeting and you have to have a great script and you have to have a great actor. A writer has an amount of time that's fairly un unlimited to come up with and dissect the ideas he wishes to present. The director has to be one of those people who's catalytic, who can get it in the day when it's required. He has to show up, galvanize people, and wrangle the scene in that single day. So you need a different person. I think directing is fun. I think it's fun, more fun. I kind of like the social part. I'm not a mystery about these guys. <laughs> Being with the people and being, getting to be a little spontaneous, even though you certainly have to prepare. But maybe because I've only been a writer, you know, through through this part of my life, I I now want the other. And now and that's the, the I just want to have a little little more fun. <laughs> so that's what frustrates me these days is. All these obstacles that sort of compromise, dilute, and otherwise prevent me from reaching my fix because I'm now strung out. It's harder to get satisfied by a little bit. Two lines on Laverne and Shirley is not going to do it. I need the whole enchilada, and I'm being prevented by a bunch of people in the middle. So it becomes now diplomacy, and that's sad because it's not, I can't just rush in anymore. I have to be a diplomat.
when you look at inside yourself for what is going to matter, um, there is a there is a, a sort of a switch inside you, and you either throw that switch or you don't. Darabont wrote a great line in Shawshank: "Get busy living or get busy dying," and that's really what it's about. But this isn't a nice little neat thing. This isn't a, a thing to do instead of get a job. This is a pursuit that will take your life if you let it. And this is, a, this is something that requires you to fight for your life, to fight for your soul, to fight for every moment you're living in. You have to, you have to make the commitment inside yourself. If you want to tell a story, that you want the world to see, you have to decide to do that. So if you're here just to get in the business, I think that's what he's saying, that's the wrong attitude to take. Your story, your personal story, something that really happened to you is a very good place to start. It's what separates you from you and you from you. So, you know, start writing and start making that what Jane called your, your calling card. You know? And here you're young, you're alive, you're hungry, you're looking at us saying, Let's find some clues of how to get there. But you don't know the disappointments yet. You're still alive. You don't even know what not to do. You don't even know it's not impossible. So you're going to do it and only be told afterwards that it was impossible. <laughs> That's how hungry and wonderful and beautiful and young everyone here is. And I would do so much to switch places and just sit where you're sitting. Don't feel like because you don't have the connections or an agent or the resources that you can't make it happen. You move forward like it's going to work out. You'd be surprised. The things that can be put in your life for your dreams to come true. Just believe and don't quit. It's such craft, it's such work. I wish people knew how much work it is. I think today the illusion through these magazines and these, you know, popularization of screenwriting as a, as a way of making a living has just taken away the sense of how difficult and how lonely it truly is. You need to think of writing the same way a lot of people think of working out. You know, there are plenty of people I know who have kids and have big, busy time jobs and have hobbies and everything else. They still always find time to go for their run. Writing is the same thing. It's exactly that kind of discipline. Read a lot of scripts. Read a lot of books, watch a lot of movies, those things end up informing you and they're almost like things that you don't even, not like you're even looking for. If you're reluctant to go right, if you're reluctant to make yourself do it, if you're reluctant to force yourself wherever you do it, I write on this, there's 15,000 people behind you that aren't. Okay, a screenplay is maybe 110 pages. What has prevented me from writing, completing a draft of this script? Finishing something was the goal. Finishing that first draft, that is yours. Writing is very lonely. You know, you're in your attic, typing pages that, to the best of your knowledge, are going to be seen by your mother, and that's it. Start a writer's group. Join a writer's group, if you haven't. Get a group around you of like-minded people. There's really only three things in a script that you can work with. What can you point the camera at? What can a character do? And what can a character say? and everything else is, is style or tricks you're getting to make it read better. But basically, you better on tape reveal how you want that scene to feel and taste, you know. It's, it's the character, what the character wants or denies or needs or learns, but what the character wants is the story. But we identify with the character who's under pressure. If you don't write what you know emotionally, you have a dead story.